YouTube, we're here with the Hobby King Art Tech Art Tech F14 Tomcat. Just want to give you a quick review on how to make this thing belly land a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> here and here on the canopy, you're going to find that there are two small screws. This is a small screw. It's a Phillips screw, nothing magical about it. Uh, very simple to take out. Then this canopy is, is glued on, so you have to peel it off. It's not a very hard thing to do, but you, I mean, you're mean you gonna get a little bit of damage on your paint. Um, you may need to try to find some gray so you can touch it up. The black doesn't seem to damage because it seems to be pretty well protected. Like I got a little damage here on my black paint, so I'll take some flat black testers enamel and just touch that up. In fact, I'll probably just repaint the whole black spot there. Um, comes off, one screw, two screws, real simple, small screws. And um, I've taken this apart so you guys don't have to wait around for all this. And then these seats come out and you think, well, that was kind of a creative idea. And they're just like a little Tykes uh, air injection mold style. It's pretty cool and they've got a hole there. Um, on the front one and that allows for the sweep mechanism which is essentially a servo that uh, turns your steerable nose gear which is why some of you have problems with yours like I did um, it was hitting the chair which was fixed to the side so I actually just had to cut that open a little bit to make it turn properly so anyway what I'm doing today is I'm actually just taking this uh, nose gear off to go along with the removed main gears these these are just like I mean you just slide them out of the socket uh, It takes one second per wheel uh, The nose gear however is a lot trickier just because you have to first of all you have to tear this off and I didn't know that That's where it was. I thought you had to remove this thing to get to it because it's actually got a little cavity and uh, it, There's nothing in there. It's just an empty hollow cavity. I thought that's where the servo would be hidden so Either way, you undo a screw here, Phillips, and another Phillips screw. Of course, you got to dig into the foam to get to it. Um, not a big deal. It's all going to be hidden. Um, and I'm just going to take all that equipment out, and I'll just put in a little baggie. And then if I decide to put these gear back on, then I can do that at a later time. Um, someday, I'll probably consider putting some retracts on this plane. Um, but for the moment... My plan is to just literally hand launch the thing and land it in tall grass or something of the sort. Um, but as you can see, it's a little tricky to get to this screw. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll show you the finished uh, product here in just a second. Okay, guys, back. Um, got all the parts pulled out. So uh, one thing I did actually appreciate about this landing gear is that it's just so light duty and crappy that when you'd have a horrible landing it would just bend um, there's something about being able to bend and you know these fins I've just CA'd them back together I don't know yet if I'm gonna just recreate them all together or if I'm just gonna whack some more glue on there and just make it look decent well let's see there they're super robust as you can see um, but anyway going back to the parts that actually matter you can see everything's out of there except for the servo. I'll probably go ahead and leave the servo in there. Um, I guess one could probably pull that off and use it for another project. And I've got my satellite receivers in there for my Spectrum 9020 9 channel receiver. And uh, just go ahead and stick this back on. But I will ultimately throw a bead of glue and. Uh, cinch it down with screws to hold it in securely uh, If a guy wanted to go magnetic on this uh, you could do that um, I would Recommend if you were going to do something like that. You'd probably hinge the front Even though the back is where it would typically lift and it would separate here on a real F14 Everybody's seen Top Gun so you don't need my advice for that But if you flip it forward, of course, it can't blow off but some guys have taken and put their batteries in here, and that's a really cool idea. The only thing I don't like about that is I already did all the work to make my battery fit in the bottom, which is a 4S 2200 milliamp 60C Zippy Compact. And I want to show you one other mod. I haven't tested it yet, so who knows? Maybe it's a horrible mod. Um, but I, I cut these vent holes, and then I cut these vent holes. 
which will allow for a little bit more throughput on the EDFs. Um, who knows, it's probably gonna do nothing but cause trouble uh, knowing this plane, it's kind of a piece of crap. But at the same time, one thing I really like about this piece of crap is that it is a really pretty cool looking piece of crap. Um, it does fly, sort of, after a lot of work. So I do not like the way it looks without these uh, vertical stabilizers uh, that are on the bottom of the plane. So I'll probably go ahead and figure out a way to get those on there. One guy on YouTube had a really nice video of all the work he did, and he went ahead and you know, epoxied the whole bottom, which I'm going to do here in a minute because I've already ran into a problem with that. I don't want to lose this. I really like that feature, and I really like this feature. Um, you'll notice I don't have the ordinance on here. Um, now that I've lost the gear, it might be time to go ahead and put the the missile rails on and all that um, so they can promptly be ripped off. Um, the other thing is the drop tanks here. Um, you can see the magnets. I don't know if I'm going to put those on, but it might help to dissuade these from being ripped off um, because, of course, the tanks will take the brunt of the landing force. Uh, and my plans are to come in at a high alpha and just basically hit the butt and, and let it plop forward. I don't think it's going to damage itself too bad because of the nature of the coating. I'm, I'm not even going to, I don't know, I'll use either a 30-minute epoxy or a 5-minute epoxy. I haven't decided yet. Um, probably just going to go with 5-minute because I really just don't care that much about this plane. It's a cool plane. It's fun to fly. I feel like it's imminently ready to catch on fire at any moment just because the ESCs are not, I don't know, technically rated for the 4S configuration. Um, but real quick view on here. I had to take this and trim down this edge so that I could get it to close. And I put in a big, thick piece of tape uh, that's fixed all the way through there just to try to get... Um, try to get a little better advantage when you're putting in the battery. I mean, my battery fills this entire cavity. And then the wires actually go through here. Of course, this has all been carved out and just took a bunch of CA and just worked around it every time it would wear out and ream that hole. That uh, So this is pretty solid on mine. I can't speak for yours, but you can see I've even cut every one of those rails. So this bottom is detached physically from the tops and sides. But the whole idea is then I could crush the battery in to get it to close. And it actually worked pretty good. So no, no complaints there. And you can see I got a full passage to get into this other side. And that's where, of course, my um, XT60 to receive my XT60. I always put these score marks on there. So you've got a little something to hang on to when you're plugging and unplugging. But I just feed that through here. And I'm actually just going to take and put a clear piece of plastic across here now. That's going to help to guide the XT60 and then the balanced charger port. Because I just got to get it out of the way since this cavity is literally full of battery. Um, and then below you can see the receiver and the 4,000 wires going through uh, to all the servos. So, real quick rundown. You guys are going to get this thing out of the box if you buy one. You're going to think, this plane is sweet. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be, you know, everything I, I could possibly want from an F-14. And then you're going to put a 3S pack in it. Even a high c 120 discharge uh, 3S pack. And you're going to be so disappointed. Um, so, just be ready for it. I mean... I was ready for it, so you should be too. Um, and you can see, I didn't even really take the time to get too aggressively particular about my alignment there. I may go through and clean that up just a touch, um, uh, particularly on this side. I didn't seem to follow a very straight line. And to be honest, you're not going to see that very much. As it flies along, it's not going to look that bad, I don't think. Um, but one thing I've learned, guys, gray is very hard to match, um, as is any color that's striking and... Um, there's four trillion different types of gray out there. So good luck getting it to match anything. Um, if you guys find an exact color, like a tester's color that matches really well, um, throw that on the comments below and uh, help a guy out. So anyway, like I said, just uh, this is the sort of thing you get. You get these wear and tear spots. If I would have been more diligent, I could have prevented that. This spot was because I had the servo caught on fire um my swing wing servo and so i put in about a 20 gram servo or something or whatever i had sitting around you can see the hole there the thing actually literally was catching on fire i couldn't believe it and then the the servo reverser um signal reverser for this side was bad and then also i, I haven't mentioned this in the videos yet just because i always forget to you see this doesn't have the ball joint well that's because the freaking ball joint broke when i tried to adjust it to make this in spec 
to this, there's there's a little mark on here. You're supposed to have like one millimeter below. Or I can't remember what the manual says. It says that in the drawings. Um, so, of course, I had to redo all that crap and make my own adjustment and all this stuff. And it worked out fine. But, like I said, it's hard to match this gray. And I had to tear this out thinking the servo was bad. I had to tear this thing off the first day to try to find what was going on with this. Hobby King is just finally getting back to me like three months later on my RMA request, but who knows? They're probably gonna be like, send the plane back in the original packaging. So screw those guys. Anyway, Hobby King, I love to hate you, but because you have cheap batteries, I keep loving you. Keep selling good batteries and I will tolerate crap like this and crap like that. Yes, that's the Sea Fury, crap like that. And crap like this. This is a pretty cool plane, but it's still crappy. It doesn't fly that good. So, anyway, guys, let me know what you think of Hobby King in the comments. Because if you've ever bought anything from them, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, might pause the video and show you what it looks like when I'm done epoxying and stuff here in a few minutes. So, keep watching for a few more minutes. Okay, guys, we got... Uh, got the canopy back on and then the inside in that in the cockpit there we got the the two seats i just glued them back in there's one little peg, peg that shoots down in that molded plastic piece and you know it's not not a perfect fit when you pull it off and you pull it back on if you really want a perfect fit you're gonna have to peel off glue and stuff and i just don't care that much on this model and then i i line the leading edge with uh ca you can see the sheen there just uh i actually use thick ca when i'm doing this um, the thin stuff just runs way too quick. Um, and I use kicker a lot of times to, it'll just help resist these little nicks and stuff. It doesn't totally prevent it, but it'll help a little bit. So anyway, I wanted to show you that real quick. Um, obviously this, this is where the, uh, the wheel was and it's, it's going to stay there. You know, I mean, obviously I'm not going to take any of this stuff out because it's not going to change anything. And here's a better view. This is the thing that that I had to take out to figure out it wasn't actually needing to be removed. So anyway, I'm gonna get get to coating um, with epoxy, starting with the nose, probably the top part of the nose from the panel line, and then back, um, capturing this area, back to about here. I'm gonna do the leading edge of this uh, nacelle. I don't know if this is actually called the nacelle, but whatever, it's the inlet. And then I'm gonna do this whole area here and I haven't decided if I'm going to go ahead and put the ordinance on. If you want to see what the ordinance looks like, I actually have the ordinance here. Um, I just keep boxes with things in them like this from these planes. Like everybody else has these. Okay, so it's got a nice little area to receive that. Um, see, this is, this is foam, but then of course the, the missile's made of plastic, so... The plastic missile will be just fine, but, um, and they, they don't go this way because that the landing gear would normally collapse into this recess here. And, um, 